The idea really came from uh, my co-worker, Professor G. Chapman, who's been working um, in Sydney ever since she sort of uh, was working as a lab manager and also went on to do a PhD in postdoc. She was the first female professor of the School of Biological Sciences. And she came up with the idea one day because I said I wanted to stay in Sydney. And she said, OK, well, here's some money for, for, you know, for you to stay for another year. Let's see if we can get a decent project. And she said, I've been thinking for some time of putting flower pots on seawalls. And I said, well, how do you mean? She then explained about some work that she'd been doing with North Sydney Council, whereby when they had rebuilt some walls, they had actually, um, inside the walls, actually created small caves which retained uh, water. And these improved biodiversity by up to three times. There's more animals and plants in them, including novel organisms like octopuses and various things like that. She then said, well, that's all very well and good for uh, seawalls that are falling down and we need to repair them, but there are thousands of kilometres of seawalls around the coasts, around the world. What are we going to do about those? And that's where her idea of the flower pots came up. Seawalls are uh, arguably the most important coastal infrastructure. Over 50% 50, 50 of people now live within 100 kilometres of, of the coast. 40% to, uh, 40, 40 of all major cities between 1 to 10 million people are actually located on the coast. These are major cities with rising tides and sort of rising sea levels, increases in storm events. We're going to see more and more seawalls. So it's all very well us sort of saying, oh, we, we shouldn't have seawalls, they're bad for the environment and everything. We need these seawalls to support infrastructure, to support cities. The, the key question is, is that how can we use our ecological understanding to build better seawalls that actually reduce the impacts so that we can have more animals and plants on them? I think people in Australia in general have more of an outdoor um, way of life and I think that because of that there's a general enthusiasm about what you're doing. It's previously when I've worked in uh, places around Europe, people have asked, what are you doing, why are you there? Whereas in Sydney it's like, well, what are you doing, why are you there? But this, and then you explain it to them and there's, you know, for instance, the, the, the various research that we've done when they find out what you're doing and, and what actual aspects you're looking at, they start to become more and more interested. And flower pots was a nice novel uh, way to do that because people saw something that they used in their gardens but then suddenly put on a sea wall and they all wanted to know why it was there, why there wasn't soil in it and what we were trying to do there. And we've demonstrated quite clearly that they improve levels of biodiversity by up to seven times in key taxonomic groups that aren't actually on the sea walls themselves. So these are novel organisms that aren't actually there. These are things like starfish, things like crabs, um, things like unique species of grazing mollusks that we've never seen on seawalls before and we're starting to see them only in these flower pots. So the seawall still does the same thing, it still holds up infrastructure, still holds back the sea from the, from the soil, still stops erosion but we're adding the ecological criteria onto it which is the extra habitat. We need to, we, we need to make sure that the general members of public um, support it but it's support it in terms of um, putting pressure on the local councils to actually do something about biodiversity in the areas, becoming interested, making sure that the work that is done within these local councils is, is, is rigorous in, in nature and actually provides the outcomes that they actually want. I think the most important thing is to demonstrate that sound science can be used to improve levels of biodiversity on artificial habitats like sea walls. Our level of understanding is actually improved and we can do something practical in these areas and we can improve the levels of animals and plants in it so that we can do so that we don't have this polarized debate in between people who have very green agendas compared to people who have industrial sort of a building agendas we can actually meet in the middle and we can do something that actually provides the infrastructure but also improves levels of biodiversity in the areas